Hey, world history students. Today we're going to talk about the Chinese Revolution, which lasted from about 1945 to 1950. Um, but before we get to talking about that, we need to understand what was going on in China beforehand. So for thousands of years, China had a monarchy style dynasty uh, that led them. And it's very similar to the monarchs that we see over in Europe uh, earlier in our class, where we saw an absolute ruler uh, that claimed authority from a higher power, such as a god. This is very um, similar to the divine right theory that we saw in Europe. Uh, and eventually they would have an uprising and revolution uh, in China in about 1911, where they got rid of the hereditary monarchy dynasty system and put in a republic right, of elected leaders, very kind of actually kind of similar to American government. Uh, it also had a capitalist system, which their leader was Chiang Kai-shek, and he finally led the forces and overthrew the dynasty government system. Uh, the problem, though, with Chiang Kai-shek's republic, even though they ruled from about 1912 to 1949, is that they were not able to beat their main rival, Japan. Uh, and Japan was very industrialized during this time period, and China was not. And therefore, they had much better weapons and technology and were able to defeat the Chinese uh, very easily, more or less. Um, and so this created a lot of opponents for Chiang Kai-shek. And especially uh, those would come in the form of the Communist Party in China uh, that promised many of the poor uh, peasants around the countryside uh, much more land and food and prosperity if they joined the Communist Party uh, that the Republic was not necessarily giving them. Um, Chiang Kai-shek's response to this would be to send his opponents away uh, to the northeast part of China where they were already fighting the Japanese. He forced 100,000 communists to march 6,000 miles to the northeast of China, uh, basically to get them away and send them out and exile them. Uh, this was known as the Long March um, and would send all the communist opposition away from the government center uh, in China. This would eventually come to a head after World War II and set up a Chinese civil war uh, between the Nationalist Party that was already in place with Chiang Kai-shek and the Communist Party that was going to be led by Mao Zedong. The Nationalist Party, like I told you, that was already in power was a republic. It was capitalist and it was very nationalistic. Uh, it did improve China in many ways, but really it only affected the wealthy. The wealthy gained a lot more money. Uh, but the peasants, uh, which was the majority of China, stayed poor. The Communist Party, on the other hand, was a dictatorship uh, that would be led by Mao Zedong. They were communist, and so a very different style of approach. But this was seen as very enticing to all the poor workers and peasant farmers in China, which was the majority of the Chinese people during that time. They saw this as the solution to finally beating Japan. Uh, and rising up as its own industrialized nation. And so the Communist Party had a lot more support than the Nationalist Party did. Eventually Mao Zedong uh, and the Communist Party would win the Chinese Civil War um, and he would rule from 1950 to 1976 until he died. Um, so after Mao Zedong and his Communist Party forces win the Civil War, they renamed China the People's Republic of China and create a communist government. Chiang Kai-shek, his opponent, was exiled to the island of Taiwan uh, and all of his followers as well. It's still disputed to this day whether or not Taiwan is actually part of China. So during his time period, Mao Zedong changed China very dramatically. He transformed China from a mostly farming uh, communal type of uh, worker system to an industrial one where they had many factories and a lot more wealth in the country. Uh, and because again, he is Marxist and communist, he decides to seize land from all the wealthy, He gives this away to the poor, he uh, redistributes all the wealth in society. And he does this as part of his five year plan, 
which was to transform them into an industrial power like their rivals, Japan. Uh, they saw this as a way to make more and more money and be relevant again on the world scene. Uh, he also did a lot of great things for the poor in the fact that he increased the literacy rate and provided many schools and more hospitals for the poor, uh, which increased the lifespan of many Chinese. And not only that, he removed the class system, uh, which held many of uh, China's people in the lowest class for most of their lives. And the majority of China before was poor, like I mentioned. So this removed that system. But some of the problems was, again, like we see in uh, Stalin's Russia uh, during their communist revolution, Mao Zedong is also totalitarian in his style of government. He is a dictator. He has all the power. And if you oppose Mao Zedong, you are usually either imprisoned or executed. Um, during his cultural revolution phase in the 1960s, anyone who opposed him uh, would be removed from the country in one way or the other that I mentioned. Uh, this limited many of the rights and freedom that they had, but many of the um, Chinese people felt that it was uh, okay to have these rights limited as long as they were provided a better life than they had before. At least they were no longer poor. Um, there's many arguments as to whether or not this was a successful um, system and that it led to China's rise that they have uh, now on the national scene in the global economy. But um, as we see they move closer and closer to today's time. They're moving farther away from their old communist values. They're actually moving more and more to uh, the right and being more socialist than anything else. Uh, so you're seeing more and more uh, pieces of capitalism take hold in China uh, the more we see into the future. Uh, but more or less, there's still the People's Republic of China today, and it still exists as a um, socialist government.